Hey, my name is Eric and I uh, thought I would share my experiences with Wacom's new Mobile Studio Pro. Here it is right here. This is the 16 inch model, look at that, pretty beautiful. Uh, this just came out last fall and uh, I'm super impressed with this. I'll give you some background on myself, I'm a uh, commercial photographer uh, based in Austin, Texas. But I also dabble in uh, some fine artwork, so paintings, drawings, things like that. So I was looking for something that would both help me you know, do the retouching work I want to do, as well as kind of work in that uh, that fine art space for, for drawing and that kind of work. So I'm a Mac user traditionally. I've been for years. I, to be honest, I just wasn't really impressed with that uh, MacBook Pro that uh, was announced last year. It, um, I mean, they added some things. It looks like they kind of made it a little bit faster and added some features, like the little, you know, what's it called? Emoji bar, whatever, I, whatever it's called. That's what I call it, the emoji bar. They added that, but then they took away some other stuff. And so um, I was in the market for a new laptop and I was like, I'm just not really that impressed with it. But then Wacom announced uh, uh, this and um, I, I had to take a look at it because it looked really appealing. And so I absolutely love it. I'm gonna share with you some of my thoughts on, on what's good and, and some of the thoughts of like what's bad or you know needs some improvement on it. So let's talk about uh, some good stuff first. First off is this, uh, the display. It's it's gorgeous. On the 16-inch version, I think it's a 4K display. So it's a really nice display. It's also a matte display. It's got a matte finish to it. So it's not like an iPad Pro where you're kind of drawing or working on a glass and it's and it's slippery. This kind of has the same texture as, um, as their other tablet products, if you've used those before. To me, it does, uh, at least. You got that familiar set of buttons and the little dial here over on the side. It's also got, and it's kind of like a Windows 10 thing, it's got this uh, thumbprint scanner right there in the middle. So when you sign in, you just put your thumb there, and that way you don't have to put a password in, which is kind of cool. Actually, I hope some other apps use that, uh, especially something like uh, 1Password, which I love on the Mac and on the, on the phone it's great because you just hold your thumb and get access to all your passwords. That would be really cool if other apps could tie into that as well. It's got an SD card slot right here which is kind of cool. So what I've been hearing uh, people do is instead of getting the model of this with the 512 gigabytes of storage, they get the next tier down and then just put an SD card in there and leave it in there all the time as sort of like an extra drive, which is a cool option. That was something on the Macs that, you know, they took away, which I just didn't quite understand because being a photographer, I needed to get pictures off cards. So I just made it, you know, made it harder to do that. So they've got that SD card slot there. There's also this little button right here. I'm gonna flip it on. And what it turns on is the display rotation. So as I move around, the screen kind of rotates around no matter which way I'm, I'm working. So I obviously kind of leave it the way I had it set like this, where uh, since I'm left-handed, all, all the buttons are on the right. But it's kind of cool if you're like, you know, out and about and you wanna read something that way or whatnot to be able to have that option to, to turn it on. And I'm gonna flip it back before I screw anything else up on it. This model has a 3D camera right there, which, let's see, right here, which I have no idea what to do with. It looks kind of cool, maybe something fun to play around with at some point, but uh, I don't see anything yet that uh, would make me want to, you know, use it for anything particular. It also comes with their new line of Pro Pens, which is this guy right here. Look at that. And you also get like the, the nibs and whatnot that come with that. I don't think I have the, it has this weird, container. It's like a little cigar holder basically. And you pull it out and the pen sits inside and then all the nibs are stored up here on the top. Which is kind of cool. They claim this new pen offers 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. I couldn't tell to be honest. I mean to me it's both really cool to hear that stat and completely useless because uh, to me that just works. Uh, like all of their pens have just worked in the past. I haven't had a problem with it. I always felt like I was getting a full range of pressure sensitivity. So uh, I'm glad they've upgraded it, but it's also cool that the, my older pens still work too. Um, and so no problem at all with their pen technology. It's great. The coolest thing I like about this device is I have the full versions of all my apps. So Photoshop, uh, Premiere, which I use on occasion, um, Dropbox syncing files, everything like that is on here, which is amazing because it lets me kind of be as productive as I want out on the, on the field or on a trip or something like that. And I'm also going to try putting Capture One on here and see how that works for tethering because I've heard Frank Doroff comes to mind, uh, people that have experimented with that uh, to see if it's a good tethering solution. Obviously not as big a display as 
uh, you know, you get the, with the monitor, uh, like a separate monitor on the shoot, but um, a, a portable option that doesn't take much space and gives you the power to retouch. So that's kind of cool. I'm gonna give that a shot. All right, let's talk about some of the things I don't like about it. There's a couple, and it's gonna be the common things that you hear about if you've watched any other videos related to this product. The first thing is, it's big, okay? The 16 inch model is quite big. It's about a little bit wider, maybe like two inches wider than my laptop when it's closed up. So it's not truly portable in that you're gonna, you know, sit in the, on a, on an airplane seat and, and uh, feel comfortable pulling this out and not, you know, causing trouble. You have to make some room for it. Trying to find a bag for it might be a little bit diff difficult. You gotta kind of look at those 17 inch laptop bags. So it is big. It's also heavy. Uh, I think this comes in somewhere around a little close to five pounds, which uh, the last time I held uh, uh, a device in that weight range probably was like the original titanium MacBook Pro back in like around 2001 or so. So it is a heavy device. It's thick too. I mean, look at the, look how thick it is. There's a whole computer inside of here. We've been kind of spoiled with tablet technology thinking that uh, everything should be an iPad or something of that thickness and and this is not going to be that because there's a lot more going on in here with uh, processors and and you know 3d cameras and things like that so you just need to be ready to to, to handle the fact that it's you know it's big it's heavy it's thick uh slightly cumbersome the the smaller one i've read is a lot lighter and, and thinner but uh i just wanted the screen real estate so i went for the for the 16. something else that uh not exciting is the battery life. Um, it's kind of abysmal. Uh, I, I don't want to say they quote maybe four, six hours, somewhere like that on their website. I don't know for sure. I have to see. But I'm in the neighborhood of two to three hours is what I'm getting with this, which is not great. Hopefully that's something they can address in a future software update maybe. Some sort of patch to do with that. Here's the uh, here's the power brick that comes with this thing. I mean, look at that's huge. That I mean, carry this thing around. That takes you right back to 2000, late 90s <laughs> technology for those. So uh, not fun to carry that around everywhere, especially when you know it's gonna kind of run, run low on, on battery within a couple hours. As it is right now. There you go. All right, something else that's not exciting about, or exciting about this device is that it only has USB-C ports on the side, three of those. So this kind of is an issue with that MacBook Pro in that you've only got USB-C. I'm sure this will, you know, do better uh, or it'll get better over the next year or two as those devices become more uh, prevalent. But for right now, you're kind of stuck, you know, putting adapters in there or looking for USB-C particular uh, devices to plug in. I've also noticed sometimes the touch isn't very responsive. So I might be in Photoshop doing something like, let's say, pinching into Zoom and all of a sudden it stops registering and I have to uh, repeat that three or four times, five times maybe before it, you know, it uh, registers again. It goes, oh, okay, you're trying to zoom in. I'll let you do that now. And I also had a problem with it crashing. Uh, within, I've had it for about two weeks. In the first week, I wanna say it, it just did a hard crash like eight times, eight or nine times where it just completely shut down and restarted with no indication of what the problem was, which it really reminds me of my, my earlier days with Windows years ago, that kind of stuff would happen. You get no, indication of what's going on and you're left trying to figure it out. I never figured it out. I think possibly it had to do with maybe overheating. Maybe I was covering up the vent with my hand or uh, something was going on with Google, Google Chrome. That was the app that I thought maybe was causing some, some problems, but it hasn't had this, this issue in the last week, week and a half. So I'm gonna just chalk that up to a fluke uh, that hopefully has uh, resolved itself somehow. I've also noticed sometimes that when I'm uh, talking earlier about the, the touch uh, uh, sensitivity, that the handprint rejection technology doesn't seem to be working right, where uh, I'll have my pen in my left hand, and as I go to put my hand on it, it registers my palm and selects the window that's like underneath my palm. You know, even though my, the pen's not touching the display, I go down and my palm hits first, and it says, oh, you wanna do something with that window down there. I'm like, no, I don't, I was going over here. So I end up having to put the pen down and kind of come down like this on it and then rest my, my palm down and, and it keeps, you know, keeps track that way, which is kind of annoying. I'm not sure what's up with that. This device has like a, a Windows 10 keyboard that pops up and I'm gonna bring that up here. Let's see, there it is. A little on-screen keyboard, which is kind of cool if you don't have a separate keyboard. I have this little, 
This little Bluetooth one I got for like 30 bucks or something on Amazon. It's made by Anker, A-N-K-E-R. And it's a great keyboard, I love it. Windows 10 seems to be a little bit uh, finicky about when it thinks that keyboard is connected and when it's not. So, for example, I can be in a web browser and I click on the address bar and get ready to type on that keyboard. And Windows 10 says, oh, you need to type something. Here's your virtual keyboard. I'm like, no, I don't need to see this keyboard. Get this out of here. I've got my keyboard. So it's a little bit confused sometimes about when it sees that and when it doesn't. And I've gone in there and looked at settings to see if there's some some option that will help control that and I haven't, I haven't found anything yet other than the, the one option to always show the virtual keyboard or something like that which I turned off. Uh, so that's one little bug that I haven't quite figured out yet. Overall I am super excited with this device. I love it. It's, okay the battery's low but I love this device. <laughs> it's a ton of fun. It's everything I wanted to, um, to have in terms of a portable kind of workstation slash drawing tablet device. Uh, I can run all of my apps. I have the ability to do drawing and retouching. I have everything with me. Uh, it's a little bit big, like I mentioned earlier, but uh, I love having all of that. Uh, to be honest, it's what I wanted the Mac to be. I wanted Apple to come out and say, hey, we've got this new MacBook Pro model, whatever. It's a tablet running the full version of Mac OS that lets you use a keyboard or a mouse or a pen or Apple Pencil, whatever. And they didn't do it. They just came out with a laptop with a couple of changes, uh, but they, they didn't innovate like Wacom did with this. So I went with this and I love it so far. It's, there's a bit of a learning curve with Windows 10 if you haven't used uh, it before, haven't you know been around a Windows machine in a while. But uh, overall, uh, I think it's a great device and uh, much better than their Cintiq Companion. Uh, the touch technology, um, as far as registering touches in general, much better than like their 27 QHD, which you know you just turn touch off on that one. Uh, this one seems to be much improved, and I'm looking forward to to using it. So, yep, that's it. I will leave some links in the description below as, as far as like where I got uh, uh, the keyboard and some other stuff. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know below, and I'll be happy to answer them. And uh, thanks for watching this video. Take care.